Greetings and welcome back to Tailspire. My name is Aaron with Nordic Forge Games and today we're jumping in with some water. That's right, today we are going to be talking about water, rivers, lakes, ponds, and using the water feature that comes with Tailspire to create some really awesome terrain. Now, I haven't used the water feature very much at all, so I was kind of interested to record my progress, show you guys what I learned, and then hopefully teach you some things along the way. But before we get started, as always, I just want to say a huge thank you to you guys. The last video was really fun to record. You guys interacted a lot, so thanks for all the comments, all the encouragement, all the support. So today we've got this nice little frog boy here, and this guy's ready to get wet. Just look at him. Look at his eyes. He's ready to go for a swim. He, he's at home in the water. So let's send him home. Let's make somewhere this frog guy can hang out and live. Let's do it! All right, so as we get started, I wanted to show you, I've already picked out a few assets that we're going to use during this video. And these are all assets you've seen in previous videos. And if you haven't watched any of my previous videos, go check them out. We've had a lot of fun up to this point. And if you want to sort of learn the fundamentals and the basics of how we're building, I'll put a link to the playlist up and you guys can go check that out. But we've got a real standard set of terrain today. Uh, we've got our standard little grass tiles. We've got our rock tiles that you've seen us use in most videos. Some sand tiles, some more desert type rocks, rocky terrain. And then for our details, we have our mud tile, smaller sort of version of these orange desert like rocks. And then we have some scattered sort of rubble. And I feel like these are the pieces we're going to start with. We may use more as we go along, but these are going to be the core pieces we use as we start to think about coastlines and rivers and where water sits and how it's going to connect to our existing terrain. So to get us started, I'm going to grab our eight by eight nature tile here, and I'm just going to lay out a four by four. And so in most terrain for games, what we're going to see is we're going to see bodies of water like ponds and lakes. And then we're also going to see running bodies of water like rivers. But I believe the concept for both of those are going to be the same. We're going to need to connect and make the water feel natural up next to that terrain. And if you're unfamiliar with how water works in Tailspire, it's this blue slider on the bottom right hand side of your screen. You simply just grab onto it with your mouse and you can drag it up and down. So you can raise this up and lower it to your desired height. The only downside, and I hope this changes in the future, is that you can only raise and lower the water level for the entire board. Which means if you want water at different levels on the same board, it's almost impossible to achieve. So we have to keep that in mind as we're building. And that is something I'd like to see later. Perhaps we could have a selections with our selection tool and create bodies of water independent from just this one slider. So that's one of the things that's on my wish list for Tailspire. I'd like to see that. So getting started here, I think we need to establish our highest point of elevation. Similar to our elevation education video, we're just going to grab one of our flat grass tiles here and raise it up to about where we think will be the bank or the shore. And so right about there, that gives us a nice high point so that we have a nice deep body of water. And the other thing to think about when we're selecting how deep we want our water at the beginning is are your players and monsters or NPCs going to be using the water to actually travel and fight inside of? So for instance, if we have a little guy down here at the bottom of our river hiding under the water and our water, we've only established that our shoreline is going to be that high, he's going to be poking out. But if we make sure we have a nice high shoreline or bank, they can actually hide under the water and your players can go underwater to fight them. So we want to make sure we have enough playable area of water if that's something you're wanting to include. And maybe it's not. Maybe you're looking for something shallow. That's up to you and you can set it exactly how you want it. I think I'd like to create a nice wide river. So I'm going to go ahead and lay down tiles here so I can see about where the shore is going to be. And right now I'm thinking about how wide I want to make this body of water, river, pond, what have you. And I think it's important too to continue to undulate the terrain, make it more randomized. We do a lot of this sort of thing where we push and pull on the existing terrain and make it just look more natural. We use randomized shapes at different levels to create more interest. Now, this is something you guys commented on the last video about being able to make even more of a gradient with tiles. Unfortunately, right now, we can only raise the tiles up a whole step or a half step. I'm really hoping that increases in the future so that we can make more gradual terrain. Even if we just get quarter steps or something like that, I think that would be very beneficial to the overall building process for sure. Okay, so we've thrown down sort of where our edges of the river are going to be. And now I'm going to grab our stones and start building up the train to that point.
the other thing that can start to look unnatural is a very straight across cliff. So I want to break that up by dropping down a little bit in just a few places so that we create more of a, a wave shape. And you can't really use too many rocks here, so just go for it. Okay, so as you see here, instead of having a straight line of rocks across, we've created a sort of wave shape, and I think that's going to really make sense with a river or a pond. And we're going to do the same thing on this side as well. Okay, so from the top here, things are looking good. We have another sort of wave shape. And the great thing too is it's not a copy of this side. So we have two independent sides or banks for the river. So now what I think I would like to do is we're going to add our secondary rock here. The second rock helps us break up colors and patterning. It makes it look like there are different types of stone in the same area or minerals, things like that. Okay, there we go. We've got our second run of stone. Next up, we've got two different types of tiles. We have the sandy tile and we have the rocky tile. I feel like I want this more rigid rocky tile on the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and lay down these as sort of a base across the entire board so that I have what I want the bottom of the river to look like. And this is up to your own aesthetic choice. If you'd like to use a more sandy bottom river, use the desert sand tile instead. It's up to you. What do you think looks best? And I'm also going to start my first step up. I want this to gradually increase on the sides of the river so that it looks natural. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create half step for these rocky tiles. And so we have the bottom, we have one step up, and then one step further underneath our terrain. So you can see it's almost like a staircase. And again, we want to break up this, these shapes. So I'm going to kind of follow the shapes we've already established with our rocks above and kind of just mirror those in the water. So for instance, our rocks kind of poke out here. So I went out a little bit further here, out further here, out further. And I'm just using half steps so that it's not as sharp or noticeable because the bottom of the river should be relatively flat. Okay. And then I'm going to come up again and do the same thing near some of these terrain pieces. And I'm just being random and quick. You know, this is really easy to do. Don't think too much about it at this part. You're just trying to get stuff onto the board that's going to start making it feel full and fleshed out. And there we go. Really easy, similar sort of process that we did up here. So to connect the bottom of our river to the sides of our river, we want to have some intermediate stones, some stones that are going to blend the gray stone of the shoreline and the bank to the bottom of the rocky, sandy river. This stone here is probably going to do the best job, but it looks eroded and it can help establish where the water has been passing. We're going to add some more of those desert sand tiles as we go along. I'm going to figure out about how high I want the rocks overall, and then I'm just going to start adding them and flipping them around, making them poke out in different directions, raising and lowering them for different sections of the river. I really like how that looks and I think that's going to look nice underneath the water or right up next to the surface of the water. So just like we did with our first rocks, we're going to start adding some secondary rocks just to create even more shape. And I really enjoyed using these rocks in the desert biome sort of terrain. I'll also put a link for that up. Uh, we used these rocks uh, to create sort of a dry sort of wasteland desert and turned out really awesome. So I'm really liking how this is looking overall. But I want to add even more variation to our river bottom. So I've got our mud tile that we use on our roads quite a bit. And I want to kind of do the same thing. I want to push it down into the bottom of the river so that it looks like sediment. So under the water, we're not just getting one color. So I would like the area to be wide enough that if combat does have to go underwater, it can. Or if I can hide some monsters down here, you know, as the adventurers try to swim across or pass over, you know, a, a planned encounter here. Okay, and again, I'm just looking from top down, trying to see 
repetition of shapes, making sure everything is randomized enough to my liking. And then we also have this additional stone here, which I think I'd like to push down onto the very bottom of the river and, and just place them around randomly. Doesn't have to be thought out because a lot of this is going to be hidden. Remember, it's going to be underwater. And then before we start adding our sort of random rubble stones, I want to see if there's a way that I can blend these sandstones in and make them look natural, sort of like they're in between before we get to the shore. So I'm going to add these again, just sparingly in a few places where I feel like they fit. I don't want them overhanging. I just want them in sections where... So you can see here, I'm adding them to areas that are already stepped. And I'm using it to break up sections of our rock so that we get some variation again in color. Using them sparingly. And I feel like that also helps soften our edges from these stones to these stones. And now it's time to start adding our rubble tile. Again, just like the yellow stones, these stones look like they've sort of broken off and fallen down into the river over the years. I really like how these look, especially if we spin them around and use different faces. They look truly, you know, random and different. So I want to use them quite a bit. This is going to add even more texture, I think, overall. There we go. That looks good. I tried to avoid the middle of the river so that it looks more natural. I'm going to go grab our little frog guy again just to get an understanding of scale for this river section and also how deep the river is. It's like uh, twice as deep as this guy is tall. So once you got your body water built, whether it's a pond or a river or anything, we could have just taken sections of our river and connected them on these sides to create a pond or lake and the same principles would apply with how you handle your shore to your bank and then deeper into your bottom so i'm going to start raising the water oh yeah so now we can see the water kind of adds a gradient and blurs what we've done on the bottom but we can see the details of our rocks and then since it's deep enough we can also lower our camera and we can actually go explore underneath the water just like this frog guy if we realize right now that they're a little too high we can actually grab them and using our control key, we can just push them back down a little bit lower if we think they're too high and just make subtle adjustments so that it's exactly how you want it to be. Maybe we'd like some raised up on this side. There we go. And then I can adjust the water level again. I want it right on top of those darker rocks, right about there. You can tweak this, you know, as needed. There we go. And we have the frog man waiting for any would-be passerbys to leap from the depths. Uh, I really like how this is looking overall. Now, of course, this would be connected to, you know, existing terrain, like the stuff that we've made in the past, our forest, or even snow. If you wanted to have a snowy river, you would just replace your grass blocks with snow blocks. But these rocks and stones and the idea of how we blend them together stays the same. Now, the other thing we can do is to add a little more color variation to the sides is add some bushes and moss. It just makes it look more natural. For example, right here, we have kind of a hard edge on one of our grass tiles. I'm just going to kind of blur that by using the top of this tree as a bush. And then something like this moss asset here, this could be actually in the water and coming up out of the water in various areas, right? Because moss loves the wet and the cold. I wouldn't go too deep with it because it does need sunlight. And that's it. And just like that, in a very short amount of time, we've made a really awesome piece of terrain that features heavily a water aspect. Now we've learned how to create a really awesome, quick, efficient, good-looking body of water, rivers, ponds, lakes, getting wet. I hope you guys have learned something. I know I sure did. And so it's nice to know how we can make some realistic, cool looking water for our terrain in the future. And I hope you guys can use the things you've learned here to enhance your own game. Jump in, get your players wet and wild. So I want to thank you guys for watching the video today. It's been a lot of fun. Make sure to leave me a comment. Make sure to let me know what worked for you, what didn't work for you. If you've got any tips for me, and if this is your first time here, welcome. I'd love to have you as a subscriber. Be sure to stick around. Come hang out with us. Enjoy this fun adventure we're on. Check out all my links in the description below. We've got a Twitter page you guys can follow for all the recent updates. We've also got a Discord you can hop in. We've got a lot of people talking in there, sharing stuff they're working on, role-playing, general game stuff like that. I think in next week's video, we're going to be venturing underground. We're going to be talking about getting into dungeons and crypts and explore the ancient ruins and relics of the forgotten world. Thanks again, guys. I hope you have an awesome rest of your day. Keep being awesome. Keep building awesome things. And until we meet again.